What happens to your body when you stop lifting weights? This is a common question a lot of people are asking right now as the global pandemic has many people training in some sort of limited capacity. Now, I wanna start here with a real life example of muscle loss. Matt H., a client of my friend Cliff's, built up an impressive physique, but was forced to take a significant break from training when he was hospitalized for a Crohn's flare up. He went from 200 pounds on the left down to 165 pounds on the right. So he lost about 35 pounds of muscle. Now we'll come back to Matt a little later in the video, but at this point, I think it's reasonable to wonder exactly how long it takes to see this kind of muscle loss. Does it happen after a week, a month, a year? And does it depend on if you did absolutely nothing or just reduced your training workload? Well, luckily, science can help us answer all of these questions. First, it's important to acknowledge that muscle loss is a complex process, an ongoing tug of war between muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown, where gradually the muscle protein breakdown side starts to win. And how quickly that tug of war turns in favor of muscle loss first depends on just how little you're doing physically. Scientific evidence tells us that if you don't do any physical activity at all, unfortunately, you can lose a lot of muscle depressingly fast. One 2016 study from Dirks and colleagues found that complete bed rest caused significant muscle loss in just one week. Now, granted, this study may not be relevant to many of you since these subjects weren't regularly weight training in the first place. And unless you're seriously injured or hospitalized, chances are you won't be restricted to a bed for seven days, including hygiene and sanitary activities. I mean, even if you're not training at all, chances are most of you will still be getting out of bed and doing some sort of normal everyday activity. And as it turns out, just walking around is actually quite a lot better at preventing muscle loss than lying in bed all day, even if you aren't actually lifting weights. This was evidenced in a recent study from Huang and colleagues, where they took 20 subjects with at least one year of training experience and had them stop lifting altogether for two weeks, but still carried out their regular daily activities. So not complete bed rest this time. And this time, as you can see in the graph, there actually was no significant drop off in muscle mass after two weeks of detraining. So this study and other similar research tells us that you probably won't see noticeable muscle loss within two weeks of detraining, as long as you're bothering to get up and get dressed. But in my opinion, I would say that's probably just about the cutoff. Sometime soon after two or three weeks, most people are gonna start to notice some muscle shrinkage. This is the same time frame muscle researchers Fisher and Steele cited in their review of evidence-based recommendations for hypertrophy, with quote, up to three weeks weeks being the maximum time frame you can take a break without fear of atrophy or muscle loss. The three week time frame also makes an appearance in the Ogasawara data I've talked about here on the channel before, where you do see these dips in muscle mass after three weeks of detraining. But if we zoom in on the line here, it's still hard to tell if that muscle loss happened gradually and evenly over those three weeks, or if there was a hard drop off, say after two weeks. Now, some experts still claim that this isn't actually true muscle loss. It's mostly just a loss of glycogen and water stores inside the muscle, not actual contractile tissue loss per se. I think they might be onto something. This theory would explain why the rebounds we see after these short breaks are so quick. If it's just water and glycogen loss, those fuel stores should refill very quickly as soon as we start lifting again. Okay, so detraining for up to three weeks doesn't seem to be too bad as long as you're moving around at all, but what about training breaks that last longer than this? What if you're forced to cancel your gym membership for say two months because you decided to take part in a training montage inspired home invasion and got put on house arrest for two months? Well, based on two separate studies here, it seems that you could expect to lose up to half your gains if you take two months off. Now, let's take a quick look at this Leaguer paper from 2006. They put subjects on an eight week training program and then had them abruptly stop training for another eight weeks. So about two months on and then two months off. During the first two months, they saw a 10% increase in muscle size, but during the two months of no weights, they saw those gains get cut in half. So if we take a glass half full approach, even after two months of no lifting at all, they still kept about half the muscle they had built in eight weeks by just continuing everyday activities. I think that's actually fairly encouraging, especially if you consider that most people should be able to do a little more than simply get out of bed and make it to the fridge. Now keep in mind these subjects were essentially newbies, so they trained for two months and then took two months off, that's it. So most people with more lifting experience might see less relative loss in that same time frame, but it's hard to say based on the data available. And of course, so far we've been speaking in very broad terms. How much muscle you actually lose depends on three main factors. Again, the first being just how much or how little you're doing. As we've seen, complete bed rest is in fact quite a lot worse than just walking around and doing everyday activities because those simple movements will mechanically activate most muscles to some extent. But that itself will still be quite a bit worse than doing high rep body weight workouts, which is probably a bit worse than doing heavier training with weighted resistance. But still, I do think the gap here is much smaller than the gap here. And the reason I say this is based on a 2011 study from Bickel and colleagues, which found that even reducing training volume all the way down to one ninth of what you were doing before was enough to maintain muscle mass on average for 
32 weeks. That's over seven months. So this is quite encouraging. It tells us that even low volume, quote, suboptimal workouts should be enough to keep most of your muscle hanging around for at least six or seven months. Okay, secondly, how much muscle you lose depends on your diet, especially total caloric intake. A new paper published this year from Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld noted that a sustained energy deficit compromises muscular potential by inhibiting muscle protein synthesis and molecular anabolic signaling, whereas being in a caloric surplus provides the ideal milieu for promoting muscle growth. And while this research is focused on maximizing muscle growth rather than minimizing muscle loss, because muscle loss is ultimately driven by muscle protein synthesis losing the tug of war, this same advice still holds. You wanna avoid a caloric deficit and at least eat at maintenance or in a slight caloric surplus if your main goal is to avoid muscle loss. Third, protein intake also really matters. That same review cites 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, so about 0.7 to one gram per pound as a good range for drug-free, non-dieting trainees. However, you may wanna err on the high end or even slightly higher if you aren't actually training. Now, another thing a lot of people worry about is age, and based on the mountain of research exploring age-related muscle loss or sarcopenia, it would seem reasonable to assume that muscle loss from detraining increases as you get older. However, this isn't actually all that clear, at least in cases of bed rest. According to a 2016 review in the Journal of Frailty and Aging, it appears that periods of muscle disuse result in muscle losses of a similar magnitude compared to the young. But these authors still highlight the importance of muscle mass maintenance for metabolic health in aging. Now, with that said, the Bickle paper from earlier did find that the one ninth training volume protocol was only enough to maintain muscle mass in the younger group and not in the older group, which could imply that older individuals, so folks 60 and up, need more volume to keep their gains sticking around. But for anyone under 60, just hitting simple bodyweight workouts where you train each muscle close to failure once or twice per week should be enough to keep the muscle you've built hanging around as long as you know, you're also eating somewhere in the range of one gram of protein per pound of body weight and putting yourself at or above caloric maintenance. And if you don't know how to figure that out, multiplying your body weight by 16 should get you in the right ballpark for calories, and then you can guess and check your weight trends from there. But, and this is a big but, even if you ignore all of my advice in this video and decide to do absolutely nothing for the next two months or two years, not all is lost. Remember Matt from the beginning of the video? Well, it took him about seven years of training to build his peak physique. Then, because he was completely bedridden and fed only through an IV, it only took him two months for him to lose all of that muscle. However, here's the good news, it definitely didn't take another seven years for him to build that muscle back. In fact, with just two months of retraining, he was able to pack all of his lost muscle back on. This is, of course, owing to the power of muscle memory, the idea that it's a lot easier to rebuild lost muscle than it is to build new muscle from scratch. Now, this is actually currently a controversial topic in the scientific literature. A now famous pioneering study from 2010 showed that muscle nuclei that were formed during training stuck around basically forever. So the original theory was that as soon as you start training again, those nuclei can start pumping out new muscle proteins and boom, you rebuild all your lost muscle lickety split. And even though this was the prevailing theory up until about the middle of last year, this research was performed on rodents. And as it turns out, a new study from Schneiders and colleagues conducted on humans this time found something different. Myonuclei still increased with training, but actually went back to baseline after just one year of detraining. So maybe they don't stick around forever after all. Now this has led many experts in the field to wonder if it's actually epigenetic changes playing the main role in muscle memory, a la this 2018 study from Seaborn and colleagues. Regardless, while the actual mechanism is currently up for debate again, the existence of muscle memory itself is not. Whether owing to nuclei retention or epigenetic modifications, muscle memory is real, and it will help you build back any muscle that you lost a lot faster than it took you to build it in the first place. Okay, so guys, before you click out, I've got two quick announcements. First, I'm gonna be releasing a free bridge program for anyone subscribed to my newsletter in the coming few weeks, so you guys know exactly what to do as soon as all the gyms reopen. So I'll put a link to my newsletter down below so you guys can sign up and get that free program as soon as I drop it. Now, second, I just launched my first blog article over on jeffnipper.com. Now, it covers the same topic as in this video, but in quite a lot more scientific detail. And this is something I'm gonna do my best to do in future videos for those of you who wanna nerd out a bit more or have something that you can more easily reference and come back to. Also, if you're wondering what to do with your diet after a detraining period, there's a full section in my ultimate guide to body recomposition dedicated to detraining with specific examples of how to set up your macros, including sample meal plans and really everything else related to nutrition and it's over 15 chapters in total. So I'll put a button to that over here next to my head if you guys wanna check it out. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, you have to stop. Yes, sir, we have to stop you. All right, come with me.